So you guys, today we have a very, very powerful story for you guys. We hear the story of Yasmin, someone who got paralyzed at the age of 13. And with the deck stacked completely against her, she prevailed each and every time. You know, and you guys, to be honest, since I've been filming these interviews, never not one time have I ever felt like I wanted to quit. Hearing this story really made me want to quit. I had to go talk to Cassandra. We, we As soon as I got done with the interview, I, I rushed to Cassandra. We talked about it. We both cried about it. It was it was something that it, it, it bothered me. And it bothered me because, you know, this this young woman got paralyzed at the age of 13. And she's in middle school. You know, just, you know, I could only just think about what I was doing at the age of 13. You know, and, th- and this story really touched me. So, like I, like I told her, this story is a story that women all around the world need to hear. Not just women, people in general. This is truly a story of perseverance this is truly a comeback story so yasmin i just want to say thank you for allowing me to interview you and i hope you guys enjoy the interview enjoy all right then let's do it then okay all right all right how you doing today (laughs) everything going good with you yes everything okay 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 that's what's up that's what's up so before we get into your actual story Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about you, like your age, uh, your name, your date of paralysis, you know, just anything interesting that the people might want to know? Okay. My name is Yasmin. I go by the name of Yazzie. Um, mm-hmm. I am 27 years old. I'm going to be actually 28 tomorrow, April 1st. <laughs> oh, happy oh, oh, happy early birthday. Yes. Okay. So, um, basically, um, I'm a my paralysis is at the um at the level of T T eleven. Okay. Um in I mean <laughs> uh okay. okay. Yeah. What date did you get paralyzed? Um, what date and I, how old was you? I was thirteen years old. So I okay. was um it was October seventeenth in two thousand seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's been over ten years for you. How many yeah. years has it been? It's been actually 16 now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how do you feel about those dates every every year that date comes? How do you feel about that? Um really like just like just now, like I'll say like I could say probably like five years mm-hmm. from now. Now I it's like been making me, you know, like just from like the growth of it and really mm-hmm. just like you know, adapting to, like, just really just adapting over the years and really just growing up, basically, you know? So it's just, mm-hmm. like, now I just look at it as a, you know, celebration of, you know, me still being That's here. what's up. So That's like, what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. And you want to know what, to be honest, for the same, I mean, for the longest time, I felt the same way. Like, at first, I was, I was down. I tried to avoid the day. I tried to really just think about mm-hmm. anything but that day. But it just seems like, like, a week before that day, all the way leading up to that date until the day after that date. Yeah. It was like, like, that's all I really kind of, it was just on my mind. Like, don't think about it. Don't think about it. But then you just think about it. But after a while, you're right. It's, it's really a dead celebration. All right. Cause you you could be dead post that date. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But we're still here. You know, you said you were 16 years, right? No, I was 13. 13. 13? Oh, no, yeah, no, no, it was no. Six, it's been 16 years, but yeah. It's been 16 years. So, you know, look, it's been 16 years since the day that you could have died. You still here 16 years later. It's wonderful to see. And look at us, you know. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Okay. Okay. Uh, did you have any hobbies that you did before you got paralyzed? Like, like, uh, like did you play softball? Was there anything that you um, was into? Yeah, I was basically, um, I was doing all jack of trades, uh, cheerleading, volleyball. Okay. Um, I was, um, doing cadet, uh, that was like for after school, like helping the kids cross across the street. I okay. was like, just into a lot of stuff, like African dance, just oh, gymnastics. Okay. So I was real active in a lot of things. Okay. 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 Now what grade was you in when you got paralyzed? Uh, I was in the seventh, sixth, seventh grade. Yeah, like sixth, sixth, seventh grade? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay, now we can go ahead and uh, just dive into your story. Um, 
What was that day like for you? How was that day going? Was you having a good day, a bad day? How was that day going for you? Um, I was actually having a good day. Um, okay. Um, yeah, that day it was just like I don't know. It was it was so weird though when the day happened, mm-hmm. like because like a like I don't know why, but it plays over and over with me because I like. It was just a lot of stuff going on in our neighborhood at the time, around that time, where it was, like, a lot of, like, shootings just happening. And it was, like, a lot of things, like, just happening on the news, too, as well. But um, I don't know. I just didn't think that, you know, it would happen to me. Like, just from around that time, a lot of things was going on. I didn't think that it would happen to me. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, basically, that day uh, happened. We were walking to the store, and after the store, um, one of the girls that I was, you know, friends with at the time, she seen one of the boys that she, you know, liked it, and mm-hmm. he, um, he basically like during the during the summer he's like gone with his dad, and then like during the fall he comes back to stay with his mom. Okay. And so basically, she, you know, wouldn't see him like you know she would regularly, you know, see him. Mm-hmm. So. Um, she was just, you know, like begging me, like, can we go? Can we go over there? Can we go over there? So I finally was like, okay, come on. We went over there. Yeah. And um, we was all sitting on his porch and it was like a whole bunch of us. Like mm-hmm. it was me and her plus other, like his friends and stuff. Okay. Um, so his mom pulled up and she was just like, it's too many of y'all on my porch. Can y'all, mm-hmm. y'all gonna have to, you know, leave from off my porch. So we all left from the porch and we went to the corner and um, like just seconds of it happening. um, I was just always the type like that was like, I'll watch my surroundings and everybody was like just standing around joking and laughing and stuff. And I really didn't want to be there, but it was just like I was there, you know, just because of her. Mm -hmm. And um, a guy was just like walking back and forth, back and forth, pacing. And I finally had asked everybody, I'm like, why he keep walking back and forth? And once everybody looked up, that's when, like, the gunshots went off. Like, the dude that was walking back and forth started shooting. And that's how it happened. I um, tried to run like everybody else then, but I fell and blacked out. And once I blacked out, um, I just was, like, coughing up plenty blood. I didn't know. Mm. I didn't know like that I was shy or anything. I was trying to get up, yeah. you know, and keep going, but it was just like I couldn't get up. Like I was trying and I couldn't. And I was just throwing up blood and coughing up blood and I like was grabbing it was a gate beside me. I was grabbing onto the gate and all I remember was some lady in her window screaming like don't move, you know, don't get up. Mm-hmm. And um that was all I remember. Yeah. Okay, so the dude that was pacing back and forth, was he a part of the the group that y'all was in or we, or did he just happen to be down the alley whenever No, y'all he went wasn't. Down there? Um he wasn't part of the group. He was like a grown grown person and mm-hmm. um basically somebody that was in a group was beefing, had a beef and they came mm-hmm. and seen had the opportunity to see to see him and you know, they just mm-hmm. let out who was ever in the crowd. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't mind me asking, how many times did you get shot? Um, I got shot once and I got grazed in my elbow. Um, yes, yeah, so though the bullet went through my back. Uh, like mm-hmm. once I tried to turn around, it it shot yeah. me in my back. But um, I was bleeding internally. I wasn't like mm-hmm. bleeding on the outside. So they were like. Yeah. When I did wake up, they were, like, flipping me around, like, trying to see, like, where did I get shot because they didn't see any blood. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so the moment that you realize you shot, what's going on? Like, um, I know you said that you couldn't move your legs, but are you in any pain at the time? No, I wasn't in any pain. pain. Um, I was just more so of, like, I was... I did start panicking, like, once I was, like, throwing up blood. Like, every time I tried Mm -hmm. to talk, it was just, like, blood splitting and splitting and splattering out. So. Damn, that's kind of. 
Okay. So I know you said once you woke up uh, and they were trying to flip you over, was you passing out at that moment? Uh, like, was you going in and out of it? Yes, I was going okay. in and out of it. Um, it was mm-hmm. uh, two. It was two girls that I knew in the neighborhood because um, okay. they were walking down the street too. But they yeah. was like running because you know everybody. It was just mm-hmm. shooting. So when they finally seen that it was me on the ground, they came and they did try to help me up as well. Um, when I blacked out the second time from trying to get up off the, from the gate, yeah. um, they came and tried to help me up, but it was like my legs. I just was like, yeah. I'm like, I can't move my legs. Like and they like mm-hmm. help stand up, stand up, and I'm like, I can't, I can't. And mm-hmm. that's when they just laid me down and stood there until the ambulance and stuff came. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 the two girls that helped you out were, were they a part of the group, or did everybody from the group just run? Um, everybody from the group just ran and she, these two girls, they were like walking to the store too as well. And it was just like, they seen, like, we knew each other from like seeing each other, like through the neighborhood, but we never like spoke or, you know, Mm -hmm. just like hung around. Okay. Okay. So from the moment that you got shot, when's the next time that you wake up? Um, I woke back up when I was in the ambulance. Um, okay. They got me in the ambulance. They were questioning me, and I was so mad at that time because they was asking me like, "What's your social and this and that?" And I'm like, "I need yep. to get me to the hospital. I need help." Like it was just yep. like, and at the same time, I'm coughing up blood and spitting up blood. So it was just like, I don't know. I was just, but I was. I remember being in the ambulance and. I remember my mom hearing my mom and she was like, I'm here, I'm here. But they wouldn't let her ride in the back because they were trying to, you know, work on me as well, trying to get mm-hmm. me to the hospital. Yeah. Um. So I remember that. And then I remember being in the back of the ambulance and they was like, can you wiggle your toes? And I'm like, I can't. I'm like, I'm trying. And it was like, yeah. you know, so that's when I knew, like, in the back of my head, like, I'm paralyzed. And mm-hmm. um. I blacked out again until I got into the hospital, like the operating room. Um, I remember them like uh, cutting my side to, you know, stuff a tube down into um, my lungs because one of the bullet did pierce one of my lungs. So it was like. Okay, so is that why you was coughing up blood? Yep. Mm, Just thinking about that, because I know when. I know when everything happened with me, my lung got hit as well, but I didn't cough up blood. But I could feel that feeling of just suffocating. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't know if that's what you felt like. Yeah. But, but did you feel like you were suffocating? Yeah. I kept telling them, like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And the yeah. more they was making me talk, I'm like, I can't breathe. Like, it's, it's hurting. Like, it's, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was just, like, after that, they just got more more so of the information from my mom, you know, about yeah. me. And um after that I just went to sleep and mm-hmm. I don't remember anything. Um I don't remember anything else like Aaron mm-hmm. like of what now happened. okay now the moment that they put you under how long are you in induce a coma or a coma? How how long are you asleep for? See, that, I was, okay, when I finally, like, woke up, like, when they mm-hmm. finally, like, when I finally woke up and they was asking me questions, like, where are you? Do you know where you at? Do you know what year it is? Or, yeah. you know, do you know what happened to you? Or, like, do you know how long you've been here? And I told them, like, a day. But they was like, no, you've been here for three and a half months. So, it was like I was so, asleep for that whole time. So, you was asleep for three and a half months? hmm And I was like, whoa. Yeah. I was like, I came in last night, and it was like, no, you've been here for three and a half months. Damn. Mm, yeah, I would. Mm. That's actually the longest I've ever heard of anybody being under like that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's crazy. Okay. Mm. Damn. I, mm, that kind of. <clears throat> okay, so. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay, so when you finally wake up, okay, <clears throat> so just me being under for those three weeks, I lost so much weight. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's like I lost like I I literally lost almost a hundred pounds. Like no yeah. lie. Yeah. And do you know about how much you weighed before your incident? Um, I could say I probably weigh like one ten, like around one ten when before the incident. Um okay. after the incident I was eighty three pounds. <laughs> yes. That's, yeah. Just from, you know, being Oof. under that long and yeah. it was like after that, um I still once I woke up I still like couldn't like breathe on my own. So I had to like build my lungs back up and, you know, go under plenty of treatments for that. Yeah. So it was like I had that plus the feeding too, just because like I was like not mm-hmm. I just I wasn't hungry. It's just, you know, it was just like a, mm. I don't know. No, nah, so. trust me. I understand. I understand. Mine's just, mine's just almost the same. Um, when I woke up, I had, I had a feeding tube in my nose. So it went in through my nose mm-hmm. and I also had a trach in my neck. So if you mm. see the hole right there, mm-hmm. I had, I had that in my neck. Um, and I mean, I was hooked up to a couple other machines, but those are like the main ones that I was hooked yeah. up to. Yeah. yeah. I, I know you said that you had a feeding tube. How long was your feeding tube in for? Um, My feeding tube, I would say, was in for like... As far as after you woke up. As far as when I woke yeah. up, um, I remember having it for like a month and a half because... Uh-huh. Um, at first, they, like, took it out, and I was, like, kind of happy. But then it was, like, I still wasn't eating, like, getting to the way go that they wanted me. So they put it back in, and it was just, like, after that, that's when I got released from the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I was just, like, I don't want to be at home with no feeding tube in my, you know, no. So it was just, like, mm, okay. that's when my mom, like, was just pushing me, like, you need to eat. You yeah. need to do this. You need to do that. So Okay. Was, okay, so. Okay, so before we get into you actually going home, mm-hmm. you know, when you wake up three months after you getting shot, who's there? Um, my mom is there. Uh, basically, my siblings, um, mm-hmm. and um, cousins and aunties. Like it was a room full of people. Like yeah. what I do remember of me, like being in the coma and not knowing, um. I was like kind of waking up, but it was like yeah. I wasn't woke. It would just be like I, you know, look around and doze right back off. Yeah. Like I do remember that. Um, but when I actually like woke up and everybody was around, I remember my little cousin. She was just like, "She's woke, she's woke," and it was just like the doctors came in and everybody was just questioning me, and you know, it was like. Um, yeah. That's when the the next day, that's when the questions was like, do you know how long you've been here? And I'm like, for mm-hmm. a day. And that's when they told me of like how long I was there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're surrounded by family and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> what moment do the doctors come in there? You know what? Let me switch that up. Mm-hmm. What is that moment like when the doctors finally come up in there and tell you what happened as far as like, as far as like what happened to your spine, what's that like? Um, or d- they, do they even come in there and tell you? They didn't. Um, they didn't tell me anything. It was just like I just like basically knew like once I looked over and seen a wheelchair, and it was just like I like it was just like. They didn't tell me anything, but my mom, she you know came and she was just like. Like, basically, they discussed it with her over the time, mm-hmm. but it was just, like, yeah. she just was just telling me, like, I'm here, we gonna get through mm-hmm. this, and, you know, she was just, like, things are different now, so, you know, she was, like, but I'm gonna be your legs for you, and that's when I just knew, like, you know, and yeah. so it was, like, a, I really, I wasn't even, I wouldn't say I was heartbroken or anything. Um, I just knew from like, you know, the spirits that I have and that my mom, mm-hmm. you know, had for me, I just knew I was okay. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest, this whole time you've been talking, you know, I know we spoke about it at the beginning of the interview, but it's, 
it really didn't register to me till right now that you was, you said you was only 13 at the time? Mm-hmm. Mm, and yeah, yeah. Like, just thinking about that, like, I couldn't even imagine what that felt like to go through that at such a young age. Just, yeah. j- just hearing that news, I, like, you know, even as a parent, like, that's, like, I couldn't even imagine that as well. You know, your mom having to break that to you at such a young mm-hmm. age, you know, even for them, you know, because, you know, like, like I tell people all the time, it's not just us that goes through something. Our family goes through something as well. Mm-hmm. You know, just like how we lose something and the way that they lose something as well. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I know for a fact that that had to be tough for your mom at that time. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so okay. So from the time that you get up, because I know you said you was you was pretty much in a coma for three months. What is the process like getting you up as far as like, you know, getting you up for physical therapy and stuff like that? Like how long did you have to wait until you actually started doing things? Um, Basically when I woke up, they was like on it, like every day, like coming to like, you know, test me to see, you know, what, what can I do as, you know, as far as what can I do on my own or what, you know, and I basically had to learn everything over, like, sitting up. I was scared to sit up. Um, and it started from, like, sitting up on the edge of the bed and, you know, just, like, yeah. testing my balance. And I just felt, like, wobbly all the time, so I was scared. And it was just, like, um, then the therapy went on and on to, like, me, you know, sitting up in a wheelchair and mm-hmm. laying on, rolling over to my stomach, just, you know, doing stuff to test, you know, my... Yeah my level and stuff like that so it was just it was like it was scary and I just I kind of was like down like I don't want to do this I don't do this every time I came to the room but it was just like my mom was just like if you want to get home you need to you know show these people that you know how to do like you can do it and that's what really like pushed me to just like okay Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna do this and you know Mm -hmm. okay so you said that the incident happened in October, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you wake up in in January? Yeah. You wake up in January? Yeah. Do you know what date you woke up? No, I do not. You don't know? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you wake up in January. Okay, so how long are you in the hospital doing therapy for until the time uh-huh. you get out? I was in there for like another three months. Another three months. Okay, mm-hmm. so... so so by the time you actually even get out the hospital, your seventh grade school year is pretty much almost over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So before we get into that, what was your therapy like? How did you feel like your physical therapy and then your occupational therapy was like? How was that for you? Because I know you said that you was that like you ain't really like it when they came in the room. Because look, I was the same way. I like mm-hmm. I probably cussed them ladies out a couple times. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, they, look, they hated me. All right. Yeah. So trust me, I definitely understand because, you know, yes, they physical therapists. Yes, they have they they have dealt with you know plenty of people in wheelchairs, but mm-hmm. they're not in wheelchairs. Yes. So yes. Yeah. So yes, you can say whatever you know you learn in school, but look, you're not in a wheelchair, so you so so you really don't feel my pain. Yeah, you don't. All right. Mm-hmm. You know. You can say whatever you want. You can tell me, oh, like, this is good for you. But, you know, like, you don't know how I'm feeling at that moment. Like, yeah. psychologically, they yeah. can't, they really can't get to that point because they've never been there. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so when what your mom says actually registers to you that, hey, look, you need to do this in order to get out. How long does it take for you to do that process of physical therapy and occupational therapy in order to get out the hospital? Um, I can say like I was once that happened, like and I was dedicated every day. Um, yeah, of that they came in the room to come get me. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like I'll say like within like two weeks, I had a lot of things down pat, and okay. it was just like I was just you know testing my body and pushing my body to you know That's dope. do the things, but it was just like I felt like they were still trying to hold me back up in there because mm-hmm. it was just like they was just. Like, oh, no, she's, you know, she's, I was doing everything right, but yeah, it was just, they were just basically trying to make sure that, like, I had more so things down packed as far as, like, caffeine and, you know, just mm-hmm. that type of stuff. So, okay. it was like, 
And they were just like trying to make mm-hmm. sure that I was, you know, okay yeah. enough to, you know, leave basically. Okay. Okay. So how did you actually take to Catherine? You know, we're not going to get into it because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure anybody watching every, like a lot, a lot of people that are watching are in wheelchair. So they know what Catherine is. All right. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what Catherine is, look, just go ahead and look it up. Okay. All right. <laughs> how was that mentally? You know, finally figuring out what you had to do in order to kind of use the restroom. How did that resonate with you? Because I know for me, I did not want to do it. I could not. I, I yeah. could not see myself doing it. Like just having to stick a tube, the, the long tube, mm-hmm. to it. It ain't short. It's a long <laughs> one. Like just having to stick that up in there. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It messed with me psychologically. It really mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. And like, like when I tell you, I like this is one of the biggest things that really held me back for like a year and a half is just, I didn't have that under control because I didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you felt, fu- so when they finally told you what you had to do, how did that, how did that resonate with you? Like, uh, uh, like, how'd you feel about it? At that point, that's when I was like, started to get a little depressed about it. Like it, it made me kind of depressed because it was just like, yeah. it was like, it just it was just a a mind thing that was messed yeah. up to me. Like it was just yeah. like, you know, so um and then having to like be on time schedules with it and like it was just yep. a lot like you know, so mm-hmm. yeah. It was that was that was kinda hard for me to adapt with because it was mm-hmm. like, you know. Yeah. Was and, it, and what's so crazy is as you talk at the same time you know, me and I'm pretty sure the viewers out there as well, it's mm-hmm. probably still not registering to y'all that she's only 13 at this time. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're literally only 13 years yeah. old having to do all this stuff that I did when I was 22. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm, okay. Oof. Damn. It's it's crazy because it's it's still not sitting with me how young you were at the time. Mm-hmm. So like that's a problem. It's, 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 it's like, I feel like it's a problem for me. So I can only imagine what it was for you. Like I can, I can only imagine the type of. Uh, mm, I can't imagine. I can't. Yeah. I, I, I honestly can't. I yeah, honestly I was. Can't. I was like just, just to like be keep in mind, like I was a teenager, so it was like yeah. I was going through my stages of like you know I felt like I knew everything yeah. and you know it was mm-hmm. my way or no way. So it was like I was. I was going through a lot at that time. So mm-hmm. it was just like a lot of emotions and a lot of like, yeah. just, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, while you were in physical therapy and occupational therapy, what do you think was the most beneficial thing that you, that you learned in the hospital that they taught you in there? Um, For me, I could tell you mine. I could tell you mine to kind of give you like a little, inside on my mine was the transfer i didn't learn i didn't learn the transfer that i do to today i mean mm-hmm. today i learned that one later on down the line but to me the most beneficial thing was the transfer all right yeah that's mine um i don't i could say that too the transfers because okay. it was like um like I said, when I was, when I first set up, I was just like wobbly, like I was scared, mm-hmm. you know, that I was going to fall or like yeah. when I lean forward or lean backwards. So it was yeah. like, um, once the trans, like, yeah, once I, mm-hmm. you know, got my, you know, core together, you know, to be, you know, strong enough for me to, you know, do a lot of things, um, mm-hmm. my transfers did come a lot better and, you know, yeah. from the sliding board and things. Mm-hmm. Do you still use a sliding board to this day or no? No. Oh, me either. Once I, I, I once it. I went home, I I ditched the sliding board. <laughs> yup, yup. And look, look, same way. Like I haven't used a sliding board since the time I was in the hospital. Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Um. That's why you know I try to I try to let everybody know if I'm looking for a car, I gotta have a car that has a little 
mm-hmm. handlebar in it. It makes mm-hmm. it a lot easier. I mean, I could do it without the handlebar, but I always try to make sure I got a car that yeah. has a handle in there. So, yeah. you know, I, I I could get that good little grip on that it. Grip and I can, and pull, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It makes everything a lot better when it comes to transferring the car. So anybody out there, if y'all looking for a car mm-hmm. and you're in a wheelchair, make sure you grab one with, with one of them grab bars. All right. Yeah. It makes the transfer <laughs> a lot easier. So, okay. So, the whole time that you were in the hospital, are you doing any schoolwork at all? Because I know you said you was in the school. Um, so. Yeah, um, I really wasn't doing no schoolwork. Um, during, I, mm-hmm. during the time I was in the hospital, um, I was like real just, you know, known around my school and active yeah. with my school. So it was like a lot of the mm-hmm. principals and teachers was coming to visit me while I was in the hospital. Yeah. Um, a lot of the students in class, you know, my classmates was coming to visit as well. Mm-hmm. Um, during the time of you know that I was recovering, um, mm-hmm. and it was basically like I I wasn't I didn't I wanted to go back to school, so it was yeah. like I did that when I went when I went to school. It was like just still normal, like wasn't yeah. none of the kids at the time, you know, like mm-hmm. looking at me or you know questioning because it was like we all knew each other, so. Yeah. It was just, okay, so so do you go back to school before that school year ends? Yeah, I did. Okay, and do they let you finish out that school year with everything? Like, do they let you like go into the next grade after that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's dope. Yeah. That's, yeah. Did you have any? Did you have any problems with that at all? Since uh-huh. you had missed so much time. No, I didn't have any more problems. Just because, like, I was like. I was like basically the student that like did everything and you know did all my work and knew knew, knew a lot of things okay. and I was like also helping a lot of other kids that was like you know needing help so it was basically like okay. I was just you were just advanced yeah I was advanced okay 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 all right then it makes sense then it makes sense because I figured that they would have gave you some type of I don't know some type of struggle as far as like letting you go to the next grade. Like seeing this, that you kind of miss half a year, yeah, say, or most of the school year. I figured that they would probably have a problem, but if you was up to par and you was doing your schoolwork, you, know, mm-hmm. you was one of them, you know, students. I could see them just saying, "All right, look, we're just gonna let her go to the next grade because yeah. I'm pretty sure she's gonna catch up anyways." Or you probably yeah. more advanced than the people that was even going to school. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So okay, yeah. okay. So you know, when you finally go back to school, what's that like? How was how was going to you know different classes? carrying your books what's that like because i feel like a lot of times i you know i talk to people most people got into a wheelchair after mm-hmm. and you know for me it w- it was after i had graduated school but i did i did kind of go to college but at college college and in, in you know middle school and high school is it's not the same because you you know you got to deal with bullies you got you know everything's different you know like the mm-hmm. whole atmosphere is different yeah so 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 do you feel like how was that process? You know, like going to different classes. Like, how was that? Um, it was it was cool. It was cool, and, and yeah, it was cool. And I know a lot of my friends liked it too because um, mm-hmm. we had like upstairs and downstairs, but we also had elevators. So mm-hmm. I had you know permission to the elevator, so everybody would get on the elevator with me. Like, I want the elevator. I ain't going up and down the stairs. So yeah, it was basically like a lot of that stuff was just like you know still normal like. It really, mm-hmm. like, I could say, like, my, you know, incident, it didn't hit me, like, just because I was young. So, it was like, I really didn't have, like, a reaction to it, you know. Mm-hmm. I was still just, like, I'm still me. I'm still, go, yeah. you know, like, that was the mind frame I had. Exactly. So, it was just, like, once I, you know, did do my therapy and stuff and I got the hang of a lot of things, it was just, like, mm-hmm. I felt like... Oh uh, yeah, I'm back, you know. So it was yeah. like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just like that type of mind frame that I had, um, mm-hmm. and it it just made it, it it was a lot more, you know, easier for me. Yeah, just to you know be back around a lot of you know classmates that I was around and a lot of you know just doing a lot of the things that I was doing. Hmm. Um, okay. So. Okay. Now, mm, do you feel like people treated you different? No. For real? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was a thing, like, 
That was mm-hmm. what, like, a couple of people was, like, you know, trying to treat me like I was handicapped. You know, we don't yeah. like that feeling. So it was like a lot of people was like, can I push you? And I'm like, no, I got it. So it was like, Mm -hmm. it was just a lot of stuff like that. And like once they understood, like I got Mm -hmm. it, it was just, that was that. So they didn't, you know, it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, as you going through high school, obviously, obviously you're dating, correct? Yeah. What was (laughs) that like? Um. Do you feel like, do you feel like it could have been a little harder for you? As far as like, you know, guys want to, you know, date you because you're in a wheelchair. Cause I know, you know, even as you get older, it's 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 kind of the same thing. You know, but you know, but when you were in middle school and high school, you know, kids are a lot younger. So, you know, it's like they're not gonna have the same mind frame as they would, you know, if they as they get older and you know, they they kind of understand what a SCI injury might be. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you feel like it was how do you feel like it impacted like your dating life as far as like in high school or something? Um <laughs> I feel like it didn't it didn't impact mm-hmm. it, but it kind of like it was more so of a thing with me, like just mm-hmm. uh um you know, at the time like a lot of things with me are different now, you know. Yeah. So it was just like basically um in high school when I went to high school, it was like that's when I really, you know, was like dating, and um, it was just more so of like the guys was not, you know, mature enough. You know, it was just that exactly. Type of thing. So that's what I, like they wasn't. And mature. That's what I thought too. It was like they just they wasn't mature, and it was like me. I was at a. I felt like I was just at a level like I had to be mature just because of my situation. Exactly. So, um, it was. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it because you know women naturally mature a lot faster than than guys. So I can see. Mm-hmm. I could definitely see what you mean by you know guys just not being mature enough to really even pretty much just date you. Yeah. You know, because you know, but then at the same time, I do understand. You know, you having to be a little bit more mature because of your incident. You know, mm-hmm. so I so I can already see I can already see you being mature, but then I can see you really being more advanced because you really have to be mature, especially when mm-hmm. it comes to you know scheduling and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. I say for, you know, while you young, the only type of schedule that you're really on is school, mm-hmm. like, you know, school and stuff like that. So you know, like that's the biggest thing that we worried about because we ain't got jobs, you yeah. know. So so for you, it's not only school, but you got to deal with, you know. Your SCI injury as well, as far mm-hmm. as like you know, casting and you know doing mm-hmm. stuff like that. So you gotta you know really be on top of that. So yeah. I could I, I could definitely see you being like really mature as far as mm-hmm. you know the guys that you're dating because you know even in the seventh grade, guys and women is like mm-hmm. we're not really on the same maturity level. Yeah, you know, it's probably it's probably some seventh graders out there that's more mature than me right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so so I definitely understand. Okay, so. What was going to high school like? Uh, like, was it like a big difference, or was it kind of like the same as middle school? Um, going to high school, basically everyone that was in middle school at our old school, we went to the same high school, so it was like okay, you know, yeah. we all was still together. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like still the same, and we you know met new people from the people that was you know going mm-hmm. there already. So it was just basically like a mixture of, you know, the old, our old yeah. oh, okay. school and the new school. So. Okay. Do you have anything around that, you know, time frame that you would want to share with us? Like, I don't know, like anything that was like different, like, you know, like how was prom for you? Like, did somebody ask you to prom? Like, how was that? Um, I did not go to prom. You didn't go to prom? Okay. No, nope, I didn't go to prom. I didn't want okay. to. That's um, understandable. It was just, I didn't want to. Um, mm-hmm. So I didn't experience prom. I wish now I wish I would have, but yeah. Um Is it because you just didn't want to go? Yeah, I didn't want to go. Did anybody ask like, you? High school, high school, it was like I was I was I was good at high school, but it was just like I was just more so like get in, get out. Like I wasn't yeah. into the activities they had there or nothing like that. It was just like, you yeah. know, get in, get by, you know, credits in and go. Like that's what yeah. I was in high school. 
Yeah, that's understandable because when I went to college, I was the same way. I wasn't, I won't try and do anything extra with them. Mm-hmm. I won't try, like, I'm I'm in, I'm out. As soon as class over, yeah. I'm out. You know, I ain't yeah. trying to hang out with y'all. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I got some stuff I got to do when I get home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's understandable. Okay. So what year do you graduate? Uh, 20, 20, uh, ooh, 2011. 20, 2011. 2011. 2011. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I graduated 2009. So you weren't that far behind me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the whole time you were in high school, do you ever get a job? No. No. When's your first job? When do you get your first job? I just recently, I wouldn't even say I had a job, but okay. I, um, I just recently, like um, two years ago, mm-hmm. I tried to, you know, just get into the, you know, the working atmosphere yeah. but i left the same day on lunch break i left <laughs> look i feel the same i feel like if i was to ever get a job i would quit on lunch like i am like yeah i ain't coming back to this because like, I, I, <laughs> I, I, so I was like i got a job i got a job and it was like once i went and it was just yeah. like once lunch break came i did not go back and they was calling me like where are you mm-hmm. and i was like i i can't do it Mm-hmm. Okay, now during your job search, because I'm pretty sure you put out more than one application, correct? Mm-hmm. Did you get many calls back, or no? Um, some, yeah, I did get a lot of calls back. Um, but then it was like over the phone when I, you know, explained to them mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm in a wheelchair. It was just like they was like, oh no, we need you know someone for this type of job. So it was just okay. like a lot of I got denied a lot of. Okay, so you feel like that they discriminated against you because of you being in the wheelchair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, somebody told me, you know, that you don't tell them that you're in a wheelchair till you show up for the first day of work. And that's, uh-huh. what that's what I did at the job that I did. Oh, for real? <laughs> I did that at the job that I did actually get, it, and it was just like, I felt like they was just like, we can't say no to her, so... <laughs> Okay. But I kind of felt like I did let them down because they gave me a chance and I did. I Aww, left. So, that's understandable. What was your first job if you don't mind me asking? Um, it was at CVS. CVS. Okay. You know yeah. what? That's not bad. Oh, you you know why'd you quit? Why'd you quit? Because <laughs> CVS kind of like low pay. Don't nobody go to CVS. I don't know. Like I'm I'm a I can say I'm a people's person. Okay. But it was like. You just won't for you. Yeah, I'm a people's person, and okay. I was just like, you know, trying to do something yeah. while, you know, my son was mm-hmm. at school as well. So it was just like, no, okay. I was just trying to do some things, and okay. I didn't, I didn't like it. Okay, so okay, so you said that you had a son. How old was you when you finally, you know, got your first job? Because I want to kind of see. Oh, um, that was just like two years ago. So two was, years ago. Okay, so you were around like. 24? Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. so at what age did you get pregnant? Uh, 18. 18? Okay, now you ain't got to go into detail about nothing, but I do want to know, because you said you T11. I'm T10, T11, so me and you, we kind of we kind of in the same, I would say, area mm-hmm. of, of paralysis. I can't feel from my belly button on down. Mm-hmm. All right? Are you complete or incomplete? Um, complete. Okay, so you do you get spasms at all or no? Um, I when it first happened, I was getting a lot of spasms. Okay, okay, okay. Um, hmm. Let me see. How I want to say this. Hmm. I'm. I guess. I guess because I'm kind of curious, but you, but like we really don't have anybody to compare it to. So it's not like, you know, we can sit here and ask your mom, like, you know, how is it being paralyzed versus not paralyzed? Cause your mom isn't paralyzed. Mm-hmm. All right. But do you feel like you being pregnant? Do you feel like that you had to do a little bit more than the average person when it came to being pregnant? Like, how was that process for you? Like, you know, like you ain't got to go into detail about nothing. I just, I, I'm naturally curious and I'm pretty sure the people out there are curious as well. How was being pregnant for somebody that's in a wheelchair? Um, I really, 
it's not it's basically mm-hmm. like for the normal average person it's just you know we're sitting down um, yeah but um was you oh sorry about that you good sorry oh but it's, it's basically like um it did become complicated for me and a little mm-hmm. bit too much when I did like become six six to seven months just okay. because it was like I just felt it too bloated so it was like I really couldn't even sit up no more mm. um okay. just because it was like you know he was yeah. right down there and I'm trying to sit up so it was like yeah. I, yeah okay now could you feel him at all like as far as like kicking and stuff mm-hmm. okay okay now were you labeled now the time that you go into labor are you labeled like high risk at all or no um no my doctors basically uh was just with everything that i you know Mm -hmm. wanted to do um because i basically like was in the same field um our hospitals down here are like are like connected with each other so it's like once Mm -hmm. i was you know i was in children's at first because i was Mm -hmm. 13 and then i transferred over to their adult facility Okay. Um, so basically they followed up on, you know, my situation basically mm-hmm. since that happened. Um, so they knew a lot of things, um, mm-hmm. in regards to me and yeah. basically they was just with whatever I was with. Um, they was asking mm-hmm. me, did I want to, um, have a C-section or, you know, mm-hmm. did you have like, a natural? I yeah, I had natural. You had a natural. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you have to push it all? Yeah. How was that? Like, could you, like, at the time you're going to labor, can you feel anything at all or no? Um, or, like, do you feel, like, kind of bloated? Like, you know, like when you got to kind of do balcony and, like, it's like you yeah. push him, but you don't. You yeah. Ain't, you ain't, you know I what? was, yeah, because, <laughs> so, I, um, in that situation, um, I, it's a crazy story of how I, uh, had, how I went into labor. You want to get into um, it or? You ain't yeah. got to get into it if you don't want to, but... but we, can, like, we can get into it. Um, okay, so let's do it. Basically, um, my due date with my son was, was until February 22nd. Okay. Um, But I ended up having him... My mom, okay, during all of this time I was pregnant, mm-hmm. um, my mom underwent a surgery, an uh, open heart surgery. Oh. And she uh, didn't make it. So oh, it was 2013. Yeah, it was 2013, and um, she she passed away January 16th of 2013, and her funeral was uh, January 26th of 2013, and I um, went into the hospital after, you know, my mom passed away just because the doctor suggested it because they didn't want me to go into, like, postpartum depression, you know, because mm-hmm. of that, so... They were basically like lying to me, like, yeah, you're gonna go home, you're gonna go home. And because I'm like, I wanna go to my mom's funeral. Yeah. And they was just like, you're gonna go, you're gonna go, and this and that. But the day came, they didn't let me go or whatever. And it was actually, I had my son the same day at my mom's funeral. And um, they put my mom into the ground at 205 and I pushed him out at 205. So it was like a. That's crazy. It was it was like a, and he wasn't supposed to be born until February twenty second. Damn. That's that's tough. That's tough because, again, you're only eighteen having to go through this. Yeah. So, but I I just like looked at it as like I felt like my mom was back with me like really like, yeah. she you know kept me happy that day of you know mm. a traumatizing day for me yeah um and okay. um i did i did do natural um three pushes he was out three pushes and okay. um i did tell them though when they came in the room i was like i feel like i have to you know have a bowel movement but when mm. she looked down there she was like oh no it's a head down there and i'm like yeah <laughs> so it was okay. just like I, I did feel like I had to, you know, use the bathroom, but mm-hmm. it was. Okay. Okay. This. I'm just. <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, it's, 
I don't know. It, it's it's tough. It's tough. I know yeah. it's tough. I know it was tough for you, but you got through it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's damn. It's it's just it's just crazy because I know how long it took for me to really come out and tell my story. And you know, no matter how much time really passes by, it's, it, I'm sure that this this right here is a tough story to tell. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's it's a lot of things that a lot of women that you know, unfortunately end up in your position as far as, you know, being paralyzed young. It's a lot of things that they can learn from this because, you know, not only did you get paralyzed young, you, all, you know, you only got paralyzed at 13 years old. So, you know, you were in middle school at that time. You know, most of us, I know what I was doing in middle school. Mm-hmm. So just to really think about what you had to, you know, and I can only really relate to it from as, from the paralysis standpoint. So just to even think about that and having to deal with that in middle school is... is yeah. You don't want anybody to deal with that. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Okay, so yeah, I'm just I'm really just at a loss for words, honestly. It, like, yeah. But it's a beautiful thing to see you, you know, sitting here talking to me though, like for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Like I, I really commend you on that. It, it, look, it takes a strong person to really get through what you went through. Yes. For real, for real. It's, it's very commendable just to even really see here, sit here and see you really even talking about it, you know, because I don't know if I could talk about it. I, I couldn't even talk about my injury for the longest time, so. Yeah. But is there anything that you would like to share or is there anything that you would like to ask me? Um, basically, like, um, how, you know, like, how can I put this? You can, look, you can ask whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> look, look, with uh, everything you said, you can ask whatever you want to ask. Um, basically, like, how is it? You know, because I still like sometimes, like I'm still like in a, a a person in high spirits and stuff like that. But it's like you know, we do have them days where we do get into deep thought, and it's just mm-hmm. like. I can say, you know, me being, it's been 16 years now. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I still, like, I still have the thoughts of, like, you know, like, when I do get older. So, it's just like, you know, I'm just wondering, and I know that you are older than me. So, it's like, how will you deal with, you know, the, the thoughts of, like, your life when you're older? It's like, you know. That's... That's that's really crazy that you asked me that question because one I have I haven't had anybody ask me that question and it's something that I think about every single day is it's it, it's really terrifying kind of to be honest mm-hmm. with you how I deal with it I don't know I, I don't know because it bothers me I, I yeah. think about I think about it every day it bothers me you know I think about aging. But then I also try to think about, you know, you should be happy to get older. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, you know, I, most most of the time when you're young, you know, like you make fun of old people, but mm-hmm. it's it's really inspirational if you live to fucking 60 years old, 70 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, most people don't even live past 18. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't, you know, is, you know, so, yeah, I'm... I, I'm I'm scared. I'm terrified of, you know, getting older. But at the same time, I feel like I'm kind of ready for it. Yeah. So how I kind of deal with it, I try to stay busy. I try mm-hmm. not to think about it. But then I also think about how much of a blessing it is to actually get older. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, at the same time, I, you know, I, I also try to think about, too, you know, you said it's been 16 years since you've been paralyzed. It could have been 16 years since you been dead you know, yeah. you know and that's what i really try to harp on the most i'm mm-hmm. just happy to be alive right. you know i get those days just like everybody else mm-hmm. i'm human just like you are mm-hmm. so what you go through mentally as far as like when it comes to being in a wheelchair i i go i go through the same thing you yeah. know so i don't want you to think that you know i go through anything different than you know i go through the exact same thing i have the exact same thoughts it's terrifying for me just like mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure it's terrifying for you Cause I yeah. know what I think about, you know, yeah. you know, I'm like, damn, am I going to end up in a retirement home 20 years earlier than everybody else? 
Yes. But I, you know, but I guess it's just like, you know, the only thing I could really do is kind of prepare myself. Mm-hmm. So try to keep the weight off, you know, just, I would say just stay fit, you know, just, mm-hmm. that's what I would probably pretty much recommend. Just try to stay fit, try to just be on top of yourself. So, you know, you don't end up in there a little too early. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So I, I'm trying to have that held off as long as possible, you know, yeah. so <laughs> I guess, I guess that I, I guess I, I really just try to keep myself busy. That's the only thing I could really recommend. Just try to keep yourself busy. Just, I don't know, just, I don't know, just, I say, just look, just try to keep yourself busy. Yeah. Because you know, that's what I do. I try to keep myself mm-hmm. busy. So I ain't really thinking about that stuff because I do know, you know, sometimes when you be laying back, you mm-hmm. can really, you, you get, you start critical thinking, okay? <laughs> yeah. it, it's layers to it, okay? It's it's yeah. really layers to it. And shit, man, I'm telling you, you'll, have, you'll be thinking about some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, so just try to stay busy, so you don't go into too deep of a, you know, yeah. deep dives. So yeah, I, yeah. So just, just you know, and also I would say, try to be social. Are you a social person? Um, yeah, I am. You are. Yeah. yeah. So you know, you know, a good support system helps out friends. You know, are you are you single? Are you dating? Or um, you in between um, things? In between things okay 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 um, yeah okay and i also uh, do um a lot of the um like we have a, a group chat as well like with all the all of the girls that are in wheelchairs what like, throughout okay. the world so yeah we basically you know we we get in there and chat and talk about things that you know we can't okay. you know really say too much to you know okay, so that's what's up that's what's up that's, how many people in this group chat well, how many women are in this group chat? Yeah, I'll say it's probably like 50. 50? 50? Yeah, Damn. it's a lot. And it's, of, a te- it's, a lot it's a text. Of... It's a text group chat. Um, It's through Facebook. Through Facebook? Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, how old were you when you got into the group chat? Um, We just started it. So okay. it's been like, um, I'll say, like the ending of last year, we started it. So it's just okay. been... All right, that's yeah. dope. That Look, that's dope. Because I, I I'm pretty sure guys ain't going to want to do that. But yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure we will. I'm pretty sure we probably will. But you know, guys ain't trying to do that. But that, I, yeah. that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Fifty women up in here. That's that's pretty. Yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. Okay. Okay. Now look, y'all probably need to make one for, for everybody though. You know, because you know, yeah. But it be let- like I ain't gonna lie. Like I I know a lot of guys too that are in wheelchairs. But it yeah. be like they be it be like I don't. They be just trying to, you know how guys are. Any a guy is trying to talk yeah. to anybody, hey, but it just be like I, I kind of really don't be like, oh, like it. Be they'll still try to, you know, send a shoot they shot. So it's like mm. with guys, it's still, it's yeah. still, you know, different. Just yeah. because I feel, you. I feel. You. Yeah, well, guys will be guys. I, I did, but yeah. no, I understand. <laughs> just okay. You know what? Keep the group chat all females. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be like you know, we know we could do stuff, but it'd be like yeah. you be really. It makes you really think like, how could we do stuff? You know, so it'd be mm. that type of stuff. So we, mm. you know, basically, we it'd be a lot of stuff in the group chat from okay. everything. <laughs> yeah, nah. Just me, I understand. You, you know, like y'all might go from talking about a shower chair to how you doing, beautiful. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how the guys do. Yes. You know how they gonna pull up. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> how you doing goodness. today, gorgeous? You know, like damn, I thought we were talking about you know the shower chair. So okay. Yes. <laughs> That's understandable. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, look, I appreciate you coming on telling your story. Like I said, this is this is I feel like you know what this was this one was a tough one for me because you know, you you told me a little bit about you before we actually came on here. You, mm-hmm. I believe you wrote me like a week ago or two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I thought about it, but it really just didn't register to me that, again, you're 13 years old having to go through yes. So just to sit here and, like, really listen to you tell, tell the story, it, it really touched me. And it was some, and it's something I feel like that a lot of people can learn from. And, mm-hmm. you know, just anybody going through, you know, what you went through as far as, like, getting paralyzed young, you know, this – it's something that they need to hear, you know, as yeah. far as like, you know, you going through school, you know, childbirth, all that stuff is, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing that you was even able to have a child, you know, mm-hmm. it, like, and just, and to even know that you went through that while being paralyzed is, you know, you went through that for eight and a half, nine months. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, I couldn't imagine it. 
Yeah. So, so, so it's very inspirational, and I really do appreciate you coming on telling your story. And I just want to thank tell you, you, thank you. I really appreciate, I appreciate it. you for giving me the opportunity. Uh -huh. I didn't think you were going to respond back. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> not even. Responding back, I'm like, okay, okay. okay. So, yeah. Well, look, I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you so much for coming on telling your story. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs>